Hey guys, it's Andy Son here. I got an email last night from uh, one of my readers. Unfortunately, he has not given me permission to publish it online. What I will do instead is just give you guys the basic overview. In the email, the concerned reader, we'll call him Leo for confidentiality reasons, tells me how following what uh, Tim Ferriss and Steve Pavlina, and especially his wife Erin, write about has made me lose control over my life. Leo lists some examples, although some are more opinionated than factual in my opinion, and then tells me what I should really do to improve my life. He says that I should first and foremost find a job, and then save up to move out, and then continue to work at that job while enjoying my passions on the side. Now, I think that's a great idea. There's not too much wrong with that idea. And it goes along with what I've been saying for a long time now. But I don't want my passions to be on the sidelines forever. It's more of a, what he's outlining is more of a, uh, a short-term plan for me. I want to be able to do what I love and make money from doing it. Now, I do realize that I can't make a good living for my passions alone right away. I need to improve my skills in order to do that. Whether it be learning to play songs more fluidly on the guitar, improving the quality of my writing and editing, <laughs> or working on better marketing my skills, whether it be online or even offline. Now, I wrote Leo back today, and although it's not quite as long as e his, his email was, I feel confident in my response. And the uh, letter goes, Leo, thanks for the letter. It was long, yes, but I read it all. Ever since I first read about Tim Ferriss' book, I've also read a lot of criticism about the concept of a four-hour work week. Most critics simply mistake the forest for the trees. They think that only working for four hours a week and maintaining at least a decent standard of living is absurd, and, dis and they dismiss the book as a complete work of quackery. What the four-hour work week's really about is managing your time, not really as a means to work for only four hours a week. He has said in multiple interviews that if you enjoy what you're doing, even if it goes beyond four hours, then it's not a waste of time. Hiring freelancers to redo Spicy Melon, which was, you know, destined to be my second site that would help me earn income, and uh, I've decided to completely nuke it earlier this week, it was a bad idea. But it was a lesson that I had to learn. Although there are a lot of principles in the book, The 4-Hour Workweek, that are unrealistic for me to apply, there is still some value to be had from it. I ignored the first part of the book, which goes through defining what you want and what you'll do with all your free time if you are only working four hours a week, a week or a little more. And I skipped right to the monetization part. I pretty much put the cart before the horse. That was, you know, my main problem with Spicy Melon and with a couple other online ventures. I thought that if I quit my job at Walmart, then everything would fall into place. Instead of working, I would be writing and marketing my blog. For a while, it was actually working. However, without a large enough income to support myself and my savings dwindling, I began to get depressed and my writing slowed to practically a halt this year. I mean, I've only written like a handful of posts this year. And where are we at, like May? <laughs> it's ridiculous. I did manage to get a job in February, however, but it only lasted a month and a half because I wasn't quote unquote getting it, according to my supervisor and I've been out of a job since. I first read about Steve Pavlina when I was looking up how to monetize my blog. I've been linking to his posts so much that my friends often give me crap about it. I do agree that he likes to tell people what they want to hear, but is that really so wrong? The difference between my stepdad bitching about my lack of a job and Steve encouraging me, albeit indirectly, to follow my passion is incomparable. Even today, I would rather follow my passion than just give up and work a job that I hate. When I first decided to follow my heart, so to speak, and to shed the need for having a regular boring job, I put the cart before the horse again. I believe that if I focused on nothing but my passion for writing, that my writing would improve and that my life would fall into place for me. As I've mentioned before, my writing began to suffer when I focused on it exclusively. I realized that I didn't have enough experience with my passions to monetize them right out the gate, and I still don't. Also, I know that I don't just want to write. There are several things that I enjoy doing, like watching anime, reading manga, learning Japanese, listening to all kinds of music, and playing guitar. I also shouldn't try to get passionate about something just for money, like I did with Spicy Melon. Although I'm kind of interested in uh, cooking, it, I'm not really passionate enough to like make an entire site about it, which is another reason why it failed. I do, however, realize that I need a job of some kind in order to survive in today's world. It's 
Just a fact of life, really. I need it to pay the bills until I'm able to do so with my passions alone. I don't think that it's impossible to do, but it will take a lot of hard work and dedication to be able to make a living doing what I love. I do admit that I might not be able to reach that point in my lifetime, but I'll continue to pursue it regardless. Why? Because it's the only thing that really feels right to me. And if I happen to die today, then I can at least say I tried. And honestly, how many people out there in the working force can say that? So today, after I get done recording this vlog, I will call to follow up on my job applications and then go out to apply for more jobs. I'll continue to do that every day until I land a job. Once again, Leo, thanks for the email, and I hope that we can stay in touch. The Andy Sop. There's a lot more to the email than just what I covered, but that was just like the basic gist of it. Once again, Leo, thanks for the email, and uh, if any of you guys out there want to send me an email, either of encouragement or tips or what have you, the link to my email is on my site. Um, this is Andy Sun out, and I hope you guys have a great day.